Hey, it's uh, Chris here today from Huckabones Equipment. Today's video, we're going to do an overview and discussion of why you may uh, be recommended an L01 uh, by your local Kubota dealership. So, uh, we're going to be talking about the L2501, 33, and 3901. Again, there is the L4701. It's kind of uh, a little bit different than these three. So, uh, so we'll just focus on uh, the smaller L01 series, and, and we'll start with a discussion. You've kind of decided you're looking for a tractor, uh, not really sure exactly what, so you're going to go to your local dealerships and, and ask questions. In this case, when you go to your local Kubota dealership, they're hopefully going to ask you some, some pretty key questions to help you decide what tractor's for you. When you start looking at, uh, at these L01 tractors, some of the key questions they're going to ask you and how you're going to answer them will, will dictate whether it's an L2501 or getting more ho higher horsepower, 33 or 3901. Questions and answers that you may hear are, uh, you know, what size of tractor are you thinking about? Uh, you know, if you have small acreage, small acreage, and you're looking for a mid-mount mower and a front snowboard, well, a B or a BX is going to be recommended to you. Um, after that, if you say, uh, you know, I'm looking for a little bit bigger than that tractor, uh, you know, in that 25 to 35 horsepower range, wood processor or wood mi uh, mill, uh, you know, I'm going to have to get those logs up on there. Uh, they'd be processed. You know, I've got a wood lot, so I need some clearance. Uh, you know, I'm thinking about some other implements like postal logger, rotary cutter, but I'm not looking for a front snowblower or a mid-mount mower. What's going to be recommended to you is the L01 series. Uh, you know, so as you can tell, it, it fits a lot of needs. Uh, you know, whether you're from 10 acres right up to, you know, 100. Uh, it's going to fit a lot of people's needs and applications. Some of the ways you're going to be recommended, either 2501 uh, or the higher horsepower, really comes down to how much horsepower you need, and not for the engine, but for the PTO. So if you're looking to oversize your implements, so like a standard tiller for the back of a 2501 is 66 inch. Again, with a 33 or 39, you could bump that up to a 72, still gonna do a great job. After that, you know, maybe you're doing some uh, commercial work with it, uh, with a lot of PTO work, whether it be blowing snow or uh, looking for a heavy duty rotary cutter uh, or some market gardening, you're gonna, you're gonna want the more horsepower. So. Um, again, that's where the 33 or 39 come in. Again, the, the 2501, if you're not looking for PTO horsepower or just looking for regular size implements, that's what's gonna be recommended to you. Uh, and one other, the big one, the big question they're always gonna ask you is what kind of budget are you looking for? Um, again, if you're looking for the budget machine, it's the L2501, because uh, after that, to go up to a 33 is about $5,000 more, and then a 39 after that is about uh, about $2,500 more than the 3301. So, so yeah, so be mindful of all that whenever you walk into your dealership. Uh, again, they're gonna ask you lots of those same questions, and depending on how you answer them is which one they're gonna recommend to you. So let's do an overview now of the, of the three units so we can give you some more information about each one. Um, so starting out front on the L01 series tractors uh, is a 66 inch uh, bucket uh, attached to the loader. Two different ways you can go about it, uh, whether it be pin on or skid steer quick attach. Uh, nine times out of ten we're selling skid steer quick attach. Um, again, that way you can put a set of pallet forks or grapple on the front or potentially even up an, an angle blade depending on how much snow you're moving. All the buckets uh, pair nicely with an LA525. It's a very simple loader. It lifts uh, 525 kilos which translates to roughly 1200 pounds. There's really nothing fancy about an L01 series and that starts with the loader. It, compared to an LX, you know, where you can get the optional uh, swift hatch or mechanical self-leveling, none of that is available uh, on an L01. So if you're looking for a deluxe tractor, uh, it's not the L01 series, uh, it'd be more the LX. Um, but again, these do lift quite a bit higher than the LX, uh, you know, by, by close to two feet. So, uh, so that's where they really slide in. Uh, so whenever we're talking about uh, the L01 series, again, you have a few choices of tires. You'll see the industrial tires here. Uh, the L3901 has the ag tires, and there is a couple of different turf uh, packages that you can buy. Here, we don't really sell too much of the turf packages, so I'm not too familiar with them, but there's a, a few different options in tires that way. Um, and then dealing specifically with the L25, one and how the operator station looks. Uh, you'll see that it has a very basic seat. Uh, there's nothing fancy about it. Uh, I'm always preaching for LED headlights, which, which should come standard now, as well as a nicer seat uh, is, is needed uh, on these units. Three range high stack transmission. The loader uh, is up front, which you're gonna, like, pretty much the exact same as what you've seen for the last 20 years on, on the Economy L series line. One thing that we're hoping to change in the near future is where the brake position is uh, and again not having a live PTO uh, on that with still having a clutch uh, to start these tractors is kind of a drawback but not a big handicap by any means. On the L2501 
one specifically, it's a little bit more dated. Uh, again, the grab handles are pretty small for the hand throttle and the position of it. It's, it's more like what you'll see on the older uh, economy L's, but again, it still does the job. It, it, there's a reason why it costs less and is less is because there's some, some things that they have to take away uh, to keep the cost down on it. And again, still a great tractor, but does have some, uh, some small drawbacks to it. Again, one other thing that we always wish they'd, <laughs> they'd have, but uh, again, it more, more than likely has to do with safety or whatnot is a, is a grab handle on this side uh, would be great. Uh, again, not really needed, but just we, we do sell a lot of extra ones to go on on that side of the fender. After that, you'll see that we have a nice canopy installed on here. Um, and that is the new one with the quick release under it. It is the E1185, I believe, off the top of my head. That is the new, uh, new canopy that is installed on there. Again, it does have the quick release up there. Uh, whenever maybe you want to take it off or reposition it. Um, again, a little bit awkward. Always recommend it to take it off with somebody else, but it isn't, uh, isn't hard to remove by any means. So. so yeah, so let's talk a little bit about uh, the operator station on the uh, L33 and 3901. What do I get for extra money on the L33 or 3901? The biggest difference you're going to see is in the operator station. Itself. They got bigger grab handles, um, a couple extra buttons for the DPF, and a little bit more updated. It's just, uh, again, whenever they came out uh, in about 2015, these, it only was a 33 or 39 that was originally available, so they, they got the newest, freshest stuff. And the 2501 is a little bit of a dated tractor. Uh, basically, it's a carryover from the L2800 days. And, and, it, and it shows, and it runs like that, which, again, isn't an issue. That's the reason why it's here, is because to keep that cost down. But whenever you move back to the, the 33 and 39, what else do you get? You get a DPF system. It, it is a drawback for sure, but it does run pretty flawlessly on these size of tractors. Um, again, for the not last number of years, we haven't really seen any issues with the L ones and they're freezing up or anything like that. They've done a great job. Uh, you know, it, it is always a little bit tricky the first time you see that flashing light on it that it needs to go into a burn, but it's gonna do it, it's gonna do it well. And the reason it has that burn on there is because it's over 30 horsepower. Why would you want more horsepower? Uh, it really comes down to how you answer those questions at the beginning as we talked about. Uh, the nice thing about the 33 and 39 is your standard implements are gonna be between 64 and 72 inches depending on uh, uh, you know the, whether you're looking at snowblowers, blades, tillers, rotary cutters. But you're able to either go more heavy duty, or get better performance out of the current size of them, or you can oversize them. Uh, you know, a tiller can go from uh, 66 inch, now you go to 72, 78, depending on what manufacturer you go with. And if you stay with a 66, you're gonna get better performance out of it. Uh, same with snow blowers. Uh, you know, it's gonna throw that snow bigger, uh, throw more snow, snow further, uh, and gonna get you done quicker. Again, you're talking about a price difference there, whether it be 5,000 up to $7,500 more than what you're gonna get on a 2501. And it really comes down to the person and how and what performance they're looking for out of that tractor. Because again, lift capacity is all the same. Uh, Three-point hitch, all the same. Uh, it really comes down to whether you require that more horsepower or not. So one of the other things too is the sound of the tractors. Um, you're like, wow, that's not a big deal. It doesn't really matter to me. Uh, it does whenever you hear the two of them running. Uh, the 33 and 39 have a smoother, a quieter sound to them compared to the older style 2501. So we're gonna fire up two of them here so you can kind of hear the difference and see, see for yourself what you think of that. I'm not sure how well it's going to translate onto the, the video, but there is a distinct difference uh, between them running. Um, again, the, the 33 and 39 are going to have a much smoother bandwidth and a, a nicer sound to it than a much rougher run, running L2501. After that, you'll see that there was a puff of black smoke come out of the 2501, plus you need to clutch to start. Pretty minor, but just a few little distinct differences that you'll hopefully notice whenever you go to your local dealership uh, to look at them. So. so that brings us to the end of today's video. I hope you enjoyed uh, the overview and a discussion about the L01 series. Um, if you did enjoy today's video, please like and subscribe. If you have any comments, please leave them down below. Uh, and stick with the channel because then uh, hopefully by July or August we'll be introducing the L02 series uh, from Kubota and we'll do a review when it comes out. Thank you.